All right, for this first problem, we have to identify the constant of proportionality of the equation y equals 8.9x. And really, the coefficient of x is our constant of proportionality. So the number right in front of x is what our answer is. So that problem is pretty much a given. That's an easy one. All right, let's go to the next problem and see what we got to do here. All right, so we have two teachers that are arranging some supplies for an open house. This is the way that this teacher is arranging her pencils and erasers, and Miss Johnson does it a different way. So what we have to do is select all of the statements here that are true statements. So let's start with the first statement. For Ms. Johnson's school supply arrangement, the equation that relates the number of pencils P to the number of erasers E is E equals 8 fifths P. All right, so let's take a look at the first entry in this first column here. So if we take five, which represents a number of pencils and plug it in for P and multiply it by eight fifths, if it is equal to eight, then that means we have an equation that represents this situation. So let us go ahead and do that. So E equals eight fifths times, and we're gonna plug in the first P, which is five. And if we multiply, we can cancel out the fives and that gives us E equals eight. So that does in fact, fact check out. So this is a true statement. Now the next statement reads, all of Ms. Johnson's school supply arrangements represent a proportional relationship to each other. Now, if this equation does in fact represent the entire thing, then everything should be proportional. So really we should have plugged in all of these numbers for pencils into the equation just to make sure it resulted in all of these numbers for erasers. However, we can just check to see if these rates are proportional to 5 eighths and then we would know this equation would work for everything. So if we take a look at 10 over 16, if we reduce that, that would make 5 eighths. If we reduce 15 over 24 by a factor of three, that would give us 5 eighths. If we reduce this by a factor of four, that gives us 5 eighths as it does this. So we could kind of look at these in the same way we do equivalent fractions, but in this case, we would call them equivalent rates. All right, so all of those are proportional to each other. All right, let's take a look at the next statement. All of Ms. Varney's school supply arrangements represent a proportional relationship to each other. Now, this is a false statement, and here is why that is. If we take a look here, if we go from three to six, that doubles, but if we were to double the four, that does not make seven, that would make eight. To keep something proportional, you have to multiply both numbers by the same factor. So right away, we can see that Ms. Varney's arrangements are not proportional. All right, let's take a look at the next statement for Ms. Johnson's school supply arrangement. The equation that relates the number of pencils P to the number of erasers E is E equals 5 eighths multiplied by the number of pencils. Now, we already know that this equation is true and they look almost the same. The only difference is, is the constant of proportionality stated is eight over five and this one is five over eight. Now, it is okay to switch around the numerators and denominators, but if you did that, you have to switch around the E and the P in this case, and they did not do that. So I can already tell that this does not represent that arrangement, but just to verify, let's just plug in a value for P and show you that it is not gonna give us the corresponding E. For example, let's just take the number 10 here and plug it in. So we're gonna do 5 eighths times 10 over one, and that's gonna give us 50 over eight, and if we reduce that, that's 25 fourths, and that is not equal to 16. So by plugging in a value that represents that variable and solving, if you don't get what the other one should be, then that equation does not represent that situation. So we should not select this statement because it is not true. Now, the next statement reads that Ms. Varney's school supply arrangements do not represent a proportional relationship to each other. Now that is true. We already went over that and we already figured out that this is not a proportional relationship. So the fact that it is not proportional is a true statement. All right. And the last statement, Ms. Johnson's school supply arrangements do not represent a proportional relationship. Well, that's not a true statement because it does represent a proportional relationship. So this is a false statement, so we should not select that statement. All right, so this graph shows how many copies a color printer can produce in a certain number of minutes. 
and we have to use this information to identify the constant of proportionality. All right, now remember the constant of proportionality really is just a ratio of a y value over an x value. And you can actually use any point that lies on this line. As long as the line starts at the origin and is a straight line, that graph represents a proportional relationship. Therefore, we can use any point on this line. Now we want to find a point where we can easily identify the x and the y value. That just means that the point will be right on a vertical and a horizontal line where they intersect. For example, we can see that there is a clearly defined point right here, or we could use a point right here. So if we take a look at the y value right here, that would be 200. And if we take a look at the x value right in the middle of 20 and 30 is 25. So we can take 200 over 25 and simplify that number right there. So let's take 200 divided by 25 and that would give us 8. And that is the constant of proportionality. All right, so this problem reads that Brian walked four-fifths of a mile and a half an hour and we have to determine how fast did he walk in miles per hour. All right, so let's express our given rate here, which is four-fifths of a mile to one-half of an hour. And we want to figure out how far did he walk or how many miles is that per hour, which means one hour. So we're essentially converting this into a unit rate. Now remember to change anything into a unit rate, we can just divide the numerator by the denominator. However, this one is a little bit easy because if we think about it, a half an hour fits into one hour exactly twice. So basically we are doubling the time. So if we double the time at the same rate, we double the distance. So we take four-fifths times two, or just add four-fifths to four-fifths, which would be eight-fifths. Now notice there's no answer that says eight-fifths miles per hour, and that's because we have to change this into a mixed number. So we take eight divided by five, that gives us one and three-fifths. So this is the correct answer right here. All right, so this problem reads that Angie used 3.5 cups of flour for a recipe that serves 10 people. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that given rate like this, 3.5 cups to 10 people. And the problem goes on to say that Luther used 1.4 cups of flour for a recipe that serves seven people. And we have to determine how much more flour is used for one serving of Angie's recipe. So the problem basically tells us that Angie's recipe is going to serve more per serving. All right, so what we have to do is convert each one of these rates into a unit rate. All right, so let's take 3.5 and divide by 10. Because remember, to convert to a unit rate, it, you simply just divide the top by the bottom. So we're going to take 3.5 and divide by 10. Now remember, when dividing anything by 10, we make that number one power of 10 smaller simply by moving the decimal one space to the left. So we would say that this serves 0.35 cups per person. All right, now we have to take 1.4, divide that by seven, and we take this decimal and move it up. And we pretend this is 14 and seven goes into 14 twice. Technically, 7 goes into 1.4 two tenths of a time, but just for simplicity's sake, we're just going to say 7 goes into 14 twice. So we would say that this recipe serves 0.2, or you're going to need 0.2 cups of flour per person. Now, I'm going to put a zero here just so we're comparing the same place values. We have 35 hundredths compared to 20 hundredths. So we can see that Angie's recipe does serve more. But how much more? To figure that out, we just subtract 35 hundredths and 20 hundredths, and that is gonna give us 15 hundredths. So our answer is right here. All right, this problem reads that the basin of a five gallon kitchen sink is filled with water in four minutes. The number of gallons G is proportional to the number of minutes T that the water is running. Select all the equations that represent the relationship between G and T. 
All right, the first thing that I wanna do with this problem is I'm gonna put that G, which stands for gallons, is equal to five. That's how many gallons that the sink can hold. And we're gonna put T for time equal to four minutes. So basically what we have to do for all of these equations is we have to take whatever number is given and then plug in the value for the given variable and multiply and see if it's equal to the other variable. For example, let's take the first equation and let's test it. So we're gonna write G equals 0 0.8 times T, and T is equal to four. So we're gonna take four and multiply it by 0.8, and that is gonna give us 3.2. Now G is supposed to equal five gallons, and this does not equal five. Therefore, this equation is incorrect. It does not represent that situation. All right, now let us do the next equation, which is G equals four fifths T. And our T is four, so we're gonna multiply four fifths by four. All right, now if we do that, we're gonna get 16 over five, and that does not equal five, so this equation does not represent the situation. All right, let's take a look at the third equation. G is equal to 1.25 multiplied by time, and our time is four, and we wanna get, in this case, G of five. So if we multiply 1.25 by four, that does make exactly five. Therefore, this equation could represent that situation. All right, so this one actually does work. All right, let's take a look at the next equation. G equals five fourths T, and T is four, so we have to multiply by four. Now, as you can see, we have a four at the top and a four at the bottom, which means we can cancel them out. So G in this case is equal to five over one, which is equal to five. And that is what we are trying to get, a G that is equal to five. So this equation would work for this situation. All right, let's take this equation here. We have T equals one and a quarter, or 1.25 times G. So we have to multiply this by the number of gallons, and the number of gallons G is five. All right, if we multiply these together, that is going to give us a total of 6.25, which is not correct. We want a time that is equal to four. All right, because we're solving in terms of t this time, so we were trying to come up with four, so this equation does not represent the situation. All right, let's test our last equation here. We have t for time, so we're looking for a t of four that is equal to 0 0.8 times the number of gallons, which of course is five. So if we multiply 0 0.8 times five, that does give us exactly four. So this equation also represents the situation. All right, this problem reads that a local candy store sells bulk candy by the pound. Angel purchased five pounds of candy for $7.50. James purchased four pounds for $6. Which graph represents this situation? All right, so the rate that Angel purchased was five pounds for $7.50. So this is the cost for five pounds. And James purchased $6 for four pounds. Now. If we were to convert each one of these into a unit rate or a cost per pound, we would end up getting $1.50 per pound. Now, another way we can look at this is that with any proportional relationship, these rates also represent points on the coordinate plane. For example, five pounds for 750 is really the point five comma seven and a half or 750 on the coordinate plane and the amount that James purchased would be a 0.6 comma, actually that would be four comma six dollars. All right, so all we really have to do is hunt for these two points and make sure that they can be graphed or fall on the shown line, okay? For example, let's take a look at this first graph here. If we go to five, which is right here, and go right up to our line, the Y value does not reflect 750. Same thing for four. If we go to four and go up to our line, that's $1.50, and we know that's not true. It, what we should do is, at four, if we go up, we should hit the line right at six. So we just have to find a graph that shows that. So let's look at this graph right here. So we're gonna go to five and go straight up, 
and we do see that it hits 750. And if we go to four and go straight up, we can see that it does hit $6. And of course, for the unit rate, it's $1.50 per pound. So if we go to one pound, which is right here, and go up, we can see that the Y value does show $1.50. So this is the graph that represents the situation given in the problem.